This is the mini split inverter air conditioner indoor control board that has arrived for repair. Very high electricity has passed through this control board, due to which it exploded. When I physically test it, this is an NTC sensor installed in the control board. See, it has been burst in half. Other than this, this capacitor has bulged up. I am going to remove the control board from its cover and check it part by part to determine which components in the control board are further faulty. The back side of the control board seems to be new and clean. First component I will check is its fuse. I have set the multimeter to continuity mode to check it. Hear the beep on the multimeter when I attach the probes with the fuse. No beep is heard on the multimeter. This means the fuse has blown. The other thing to check is ZNR because this also usually gets bad. It is covered in a plastic cover. It is important to check it. These are the ZNR pins on the back side of the control board. It will be checked on resistance mode. Sometimes when we check it inside the control board, these ZNR show problems. I will put the probes on the pins of the ZNR. It is showing reading something like this in mega ohms and then disappears. It means it is fine. When I will remove it from the circuit, it should not show any reading on the multimeter. The AC electricity passes from the NTC towards the bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier is made of these diodes. If you replace the fuse and the ZNR, then it is possible these diodes would be bad. I will put the multimeter in diode mode. And see the first diode is showing zero on the multimeter, which means it is short-circuited. I will change the polarity of the probes to check the diode again. It is still showing zero. The second diode is showing no reading on the multimeter. I will change the polarity of the probes to confirm whether it is fine or not. This diode shows a 0.413 voltage drop on the multimeter, which means that this diode is fine. Next, I am checking the third diode. It is showing nothing on the multimeter. By changing the polarity, it shows a 0.413 voltage drop, the same reading as the previous diode. This diode is also showing zero on the multimeter. I changed the polarity, still it is showing zero. The first and the four diodes are bad. This other diode is also installed beneath the silicon, so I must remove the silicon first to test it. I was going to remove the silicon, but it has the solder pins on the back side of the control board, so I will check it from there. These are the two solder pin on the back of the diode. This diode is also showing zero on the multimeter. By changing the polarity of the probes, it is still showing zero on the multimeter. Now I have removed the silicon. See, it still shows zero from the control board's front side. The next part I am telling you about is switching IC. It can get bad as well as the DC to DC chopper, because the high and low sides of the converter are not joined together. Two diodes are installed here as well. I will check these diodes as well. The resistors seem to be physically fine. Let's check these two diodes. This diode is showing 1.048 voltages drop. As when I change the polarity of the probes, it is showing 0.567 voltage drop, it is fine. Now I am checking the next diode, it is showing no reading. After changing the polarity, it shows a reading. This means that both these diodes are fine. The chances of the DC chopper being fine are high now, because most of the time, when these diodes are fine, the DC chopper does not go bad. The chances of the switching IC going bad are high because the capacitor attached to it has been blown up. I will change these diodes to know how the control board works. The new diodes I am installing are IN4007. I have installed the diodes, and whenever replacing the diode, always take care of the diode polarity. The control board could go bad if the polarity of the diodes is installed on the wrong sides. The fuse is out of the control board. Now I will install the new fuse instead of the old one. The new NTC sensor and the 450 volts and 10 microfarad capacitor. 
Now I will test the control board by supplying direct electricity to it, as well as by series electricity as well. But I am confident this control board is fine. So I will supply direct electricity to the board. See, the fuse has blown up. Still, the control board has a problem. Let's check the diodes, as we had installed new ones in the control board. This diode is fine. I didn't change the second diode. It is showing zero voltage drop as it was fine before. This diode is okay. This diode is also fine. The last diode is showing zero voltage drop again. Now these two diodes are bad. This means that the ZNR could be faulty. And the switching IC could be the cause of the problem. First, I will remove the ZNR from the control board. Now I will check this ZNR. I can check it on the diode mode, but the correct method is to check it on the resistance mode. It is showing no value, as it seems to be fine, but it could make problems when installed on the control board. So temporarily, I will not install it on the control board. This switching IC is installed here. Its number is Q100. It is not available in our local market. You can install another number in place of it, so let me show you that. I have changed the fuse and the diodes, which went bad. I have changed the switching IC as well. Now I will test it. I will pass electricity through it. The control board has been turned on. It is turning on with the remote as well. 24 degree temperature is shown on the display. The temperature on the control board is changing fine. This means it is functioning fine. The switching IC I have used is DH321 in place of Q100. If you install this IC in place of Q100, the control board will work. Pin number 4 of this IC is different than the Q100 IC, but the 4 number pin in this control board is not connected, which is why the control board is working fine. I had also replaced this IC and another control board as well, I didn't get any complaints on that control board till now. At last, I am checking the control board by attaching the motor to the control board. So the motor is also working fine. I will give you a tip, whenever electricity passes high through the control board. Whether the outdoor or indoor control board goes bad. Do check the communication of the control board. Other than this, check its optocoupler in the diodes as well. If they are bad, so replace them. Otherwise, the control board will make the communication problem. And this is how I have fixed this control board. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. It's free. Thank you.